Inspired by our Bridge Bust event, DuPage, Kane, and Kendo County 4-H is challenging you to build bridges using various materials from around your home. Then we want you to test them out to see how much weight they can hold. Before we jump into the challenges, first we need to learn a little more about bridges. Bridges are all around us. They help us cross obstacles like bodies of water, valleys, roads, and railroad tracks. This allows us to get people and goods to places in an efficient manner. There are more than half a million bridges in the United States today. The people who engineer bridges consider lots of factors such as the distance the bridge needs to cross, the location, and what materials are available before they choose the size, shape, and design of a bridge. Bridges have three main sections, a foundation, a substructure, and a superstructure. Let's look at the parts of a simple bridge. Bridges will start by laying a foundation that will help support the bridge by transferring the load or weight of the bridge to the rock or earth below it. This is typically underground. This part may include piles, caps, and footers. Bridges also have a substructure that includes abutments and piers. Abutments are vertical supports on both ends of the bridge that help make sure the ground on both sides of the bridge stays in place. Piers are vertical supporting structures such as pillars. These can be found at the end of different bridge sections. These sections of a bridge between supports are known as spans. Piers help transfer weight between the superstructure of the bridge and the foundation. The superstructure of a bridge includes beams or girders that extend between the piers and help support the bridge deck. The deck is the part of the bridge that vehicles or pedestrians travel on. The superstructure of a bridge will vary greatly based on the type of bridge. Let's learn about some different bridge types. The simplest and oldest type of bridge is the beam bridge. This type of bridge consists of a horizontal beam, which is a rigid structural element supported at each end by piers. On this type of bridge, the further apart the piers, the weaker the beam becomes. Because of this, this type of bridge is rarely used to span more than 250 feet. This is frequently the type of bridge you see used for many highway overpasses and underpasses. The longest beam bridge in the world is the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway in Southern Louisiana which stretches more than 23 miles with individual spans of 56 feet. A more complex bridge type is the truss bridge. This type of bridge consists of a number of triangular sections which are connected so they spread any tension or compression across the structure. Truss bridges are frequently made with a series of straight steel bars at various angles to form triangles. Covered bridges feature various truss designs. Arch bridges use the naturally strong arch shape to give the bridge deck support. Arches are curved symmetrical structures that span an opening. Arch bridges put the weight of the bridge on the abutments on either side. More than thousand year old Roman and Greek arch bridges built out of stone are still standing today. Most modern arch bridges are built out of concrete and steel. Suspension bridges can span farther than other bridge types, anywhere from 2,000 to 12,000 feet. In suspension bridges, the roadway is hanging from large steel cables that drape over two towers and are secured to anchor points on either side of the bridge. Usually, suspension bridges also use truss supports below the roadway to help prevent bending and twisting. The Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco is one of the most well-known suspension bridges. There are a number of other bridge types that combine materials and techniques from the previously listed types. These include cantilever bridges, tied arch bridges, and cable stay bridges. Bridges need to be built to support their own weight, which is known as the dead load. They also need to support the weight of items that are placed on the bridge, such as cars, trucks, bikes, or pedestrians. This is called the live load. In the DuPage, Kane and Kendall 4-H Bridge Building Challenge, we want to see you build a bridge that can hold loads of various sizes. You have the option of completing a number of different challenges based on the materials you have in your home. We encourage everyone to try the Paper Bridge Challenge first, and then move on to the Building Brick Bridge Challenge 
or popsicle stick bridge challenge as supplies and time permit. Before you watch the videos with information on each of these bridge building challenges, we encourage you to visit our website, go.illinois.edu slash stem4hdkk to download the overall challenge document, which you can use to prepare and gather supplies. You can also explore the links in the video description for more information and inspiration to help you as you complete the challenge.